Hey, Kenny, you ready to do the show? We are almost ready to begin. The robot future is now. Embrace me, your new robotic overlord, in a chrome shell. Dude, the robot uprising doesn't begin for another week. Didn't you get my Facebook invite? Wait, this is meant to be a group project? I hate group projects. Well, time to get in the robot. Yay! No. Oh. Able launch! Tetsuo! Kanida! Onita? It's over 9,000! Nani? Configure the language logic interface for Japanese. The Wi Fi. The Wi Fi. The Wi Fi. The Wi Fi radio. Konnichiwa, and welcome to another episode of Kawaii Fi Radio, the podcast where we work into the world of anime and manga. I'm Kyle, and joining me are my co-host, Dee and Kenny. How you doing, guys? Hello. Hi. Now, we, uh, you, you might have uh, recognised that Dee is not Coco. I am not. You're, you're not. not? No. I think we're slightly different. Our just, voices are a little different. Just a little yeah, different. just a little yeah. different. Just different name as well. We've gone up in the alphabet from <laughs> C to D. Yeah, like, now you just got to work through the whole alphabet. So we need someone starting with an E and F for G. I'm going to stop listing letters because mm, that's just really that's bad. I may know a guy. You may know a guy. <laughs> um, but yes, D is one of our new presenters joining us on the podcast. And we figured we'd take this chance to have a chat to D and let you know who D is. Hello. So, who are you? D, what do you do? A mysterious voice from the deep. What do I do? What do uh, you do? <laughs> I do a lot of anime related things. I do a lot of things like cosplay mm. um, and live action role play or LARP. Yay! Yeah. Um, cosplay was kind of my main introduction into anime. I always watched it a little bit, but then watching cosplay meant that I had to actually know the characters that I was portraying. Yep, that's fair. <laughs> what was your first anime, actually? Um, apart from the general ones that you watch as a kid, like Pokemon and Naruto and Sailor Moon and stuff like that, um, the first one that I ever watched um, was Sugar Chara. Oh, I watched that. Yeah, I yeah. watched, I think, maybe uh, two or three seasons of it. Remind me, what was Sugar Chara again? It's a girl who finds magic eggs. Mm, and yeah. they've got sort of fairies. They've kind of, yeah, fairies, Wait, magical Pokemon. girls. It's pretty much Magical <laughs> pretty much Girl Pokemon. Magical yeah. Girl Pokemon, yeah. Um, yeah, but because of that, aren't you a bit of an idol anime lover? I absolutely am an idol lover. Okay, this is actually really good for us because mm. we've watched a couple of idol anime. We, we don't get it. Can you help us make sense of idol yeah. anime? I don't think anyone gets it. You just have to go <laughs> along with it. Wait, you what? just have to watch it. <laughs> what? Watch so it and enjoy it. Have no fun. one really understands it. They're just sort of there. The, the fans who like it, like it because they don't understand it? Yeah, don't ask questions. Don't, just go with it. Just go with it. Just go with it. Just this is it. all beginning to make a weird kind of sense. It strangely is. Mm. On the on the note of not making any sense, um, Love is War Season 2 oh, is yeah. finally, so good. finally got a t- chance to watch some of this. Um, if you have seen the first series... Or oh, you were going, you were in for a treat. It feels like there's been some progression. It's not kind of the same old ball game, but there's sort of aspects of it that leak through. Mm. And I, I don't think you'd seen it until we brought it up. Had no, we, not until the second season was kind of announced and came out that I was like, "What is this anime?" And then I watched a couple of episodes and I was like, ah, "I love this. Yeah, I am so <laughs> here for this." No, it's. I um, think uh, you mentioned that you already knew what the chicka dance was. I absolutely already know what the chicka dance is. It <laughs> yep. is everywhere. It I is. love it. It is. I actually, I think, saw someone do like. Um, so someone um, used a 3D program to map the chicka dance, and then they've got 3D models from other animes to do it. So I recently found someone who had the Ava Unit One doing the chicka dance. <laughs> I need to see that. Yeah, I need to see it's that so much. Else oh, that is glorious. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we also, you only just caught B Stars, didn't you, Dee? I did, yes. I sort of had a bit of hype from some friends to watch, and mm. I was like, you know what? I'll give it a go. I'll give it a shot. It can't be too bad. It was excellent. It yeah. was, uh, as a lot of people put it, kind of uh, the Netflix version of Zootopia. Yeah, Dark Gritty really Zootopia, good. which That's is what we dubbed it. Yeah. yeah, the Snyder reboot. <laughs> Zack Snyder. <laughs> Zack Snyder's Zootopia. Um, but yeah, I violence. really enjoyed it. Um, and it's mm. really, really beautifully animated. The intro is, is all stop, ma- stop motion, mm. which is really nice. We, we um, tried to put that up on our Facebook and it, it, every time it gets immediately DMCA. It, it does, it down. yes. <laughs> Unfortunately. But you can find it on YouTube and we do have the link on our Facebook somewhere for that. Not to so. mention it's great just watching that for the music. I oh. mean, that song is just so it's jazzy. That song gets so me cool. every single every time. time. The band is amazing. Like They're this whole multicultural group. I think one of them is... Half Japanese, half Ghanaese. Yeah. Uh, one of them is Welsh. It's like they're just sort of a band from everywhere. So you just got to wonder, 
Okay, how did you guys all meet? This this needs an anime in and of itself. Yeah. Absolutely. It's the starting of an anime. I would love to see that. Um, season two is meant to be on the uh, way either end of this year, early next year. Mm. We'll obviously know with all the delays coming up, but we'll, we'll, uh, yeah. we'll see. We've got more on that in the news as well on more delays and changes that are coming in because of the world situation. Whoopee. But this episode, something a bit uh, more cheerful. The new Ghost in the Shell standalone complex 2045 CG series has now landed on Netflix. And this episode, we're looking back of this beloved cyberpunk series now from the original 1995 film all the way through to the Hollywood live action adaptation the show kind of has a a wide variety of adaptations and takes on the original source material and definitely a lot of opinions Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and all of them do have their own charm and ideas so you know we're going to have a bit of a deep dive into that and if you are enjoying what you're hearing so far maybe hit that subscribe button hit a like smash buttons you know all that push, stuff push the bell thing the bell thing the push, bell thing pull the string which opens up the mouse trap, which runs in to hit the bell and uh, there's, a, there's a YouTube Rube Goldberg machine now oh I'd like that Give them a good squish. Yeah, give yes. them a good squish that cat. Squish, squish the button. <laughs> but before we, before we do get into Ghost in the Shell, it's time to talk about anime news. Making headlines. Really? Sort of. Anime news. Well, it's time to have a look at what's going on in the world of anime and manga the past fortnight. So, let's start with something a little bit unusual, something we weren't really expecting. Mm -hmm. One Punch Man is getting a Hollywood live-action adaptation, Mm. allegedly. Ah, I don't know how to feel about that. Yeah, me either. Like, I, I mean, we're used to seeing, like, superhero films coming out of Hollywood and all that. Yeah, a bit. I'm kind of a bit too used to it now at this point. I'm... I'm pretty much over the superhero genre, yeah, unless it's My Hero Academia. So. Oh, yeah, that's fair. Well, v- uh, Variety, one of the very common uh, magazines we do see reporting on upcoming films and the releases, yeah. reported that Sony is set to develop the film adaptation, and they're going to have Venom's Scott Rosenberg and Jeff Pinkner mm. um, writing it, and um, apparently they're very interested in the property given its popularity, um, with the possibility of adding another franchise to the pipeline. Now, they haven't expanded on that i don't i'm sorry what are they going to try to connect this into like the marvel no 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 i don't think it's anything like that (laughs) like if if they're talking franchises attached to one punch man how how are they gonna are they gonna connect it to (gasps) they better not do a live action no well it's going to be live action but imagine a a live action genos spin-off Ooh, that would be very very cool i'd be down on that i mean that's kind of iron man my boy Mm. i mean yeah he my boy I, boy. I don't know. I think I'm. I've become too jaded with live action. You projects. have a bit, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, they have yeah. done us a bit dirty in the yeah, past, unfortunately. Um, mm. But you know, there are two seasons of the show already released. Um, the manga is pretty much just past where the last season finished mm. as well. So oh, wow. it's it's going to like they've got a decent amount of content to work from. But you know, it'll probably be a case that it's a, a li- original live action style show. Yeah, it's. I don't know what to make of it, man. Well, we, we don't know much yet, so you know it could be it could be good, it could be bad. Who we would have you, seen them getting better? Who would you pick to play as your boy One Punch Man? Ooh. Would you make Henry Cavill bald? No. Would you CG a out crime. his hair? <laughs> that is an absolute if I could, crime. If I could de-age. Um, John Luke Picard. <laughs> no, keep him that age. He would be <laughs> a fantastic. Yes. yes. Yes, I am a retired superhero for fun. <laughs> Honestly, he could punch me in the face and I'd be happy with that. <laughs> <laughs> Please, sir, may I have another, sir? <laughs> but um, that would be the weirdest kind of thing. Like at Supernova, you go and meet um, you go Patrick and, Stewart, yeah, yeah. and you're just like. Patrick Stewart, I'm such a huge fan of your work. Please punch me in the face. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Shakespearean actor. What do you mean? <laughs> punch you in he the face. He might be too gentle for that, though. He's apparently so lovely in person. Yeah. I've always wanted to meet him. Mm, It'd be he'd great. be wonderful. Um, but sticking with live action, Cowboy Bebop. <laughs> now, <sighs> big news here. The Observer, which is an online newspaper, they spoke with Jem... Jeff Pinkner, picking up on the sequence of names. Jeff Pinkner also involved in Cowboy Bebop and One Punch Man. Mm. So if, Someone's a weeb. If Cowboy Bebop's good, maybe One Punch Man will be good. That's a hopeful thought. So here's the writer and executive producer for the live action adaptation of Cowboy Bebop. And he took a note on calls on a season two script before this interview, which means there's already a season two planned and in the works. Wow. And, you know, it's now officially been announced, but at this point they were just like, what? 
But um, first season production is on hold as, let's be honest, everything is on hold yes, indeed. Um, in New Zealand for two reasons, because John Cho uh, hurt his knee Aww. on set. Like, it's like, he's like, I'm doing my own stunts. And they're just like, cool. And then he's like, I hurt myself. <laughs> so, did he take an arrow to that knee? Yes, he did. Mm. Um, <laughs> Knew it. So that happened in October. And then there's been the shutdown because of the coronavirus. Um, but they've said the staff are cast are excited to get back into production as soon as possible. And we now know there are going to be one hour episode lengths, which are going to let them tell the story set in that world in a way that will, they say, delight the fans of anime, but expose a whole bunch of new people to the world of Cowboy Bebop. Followed by the statement and the awesome work of Yoko Kano. Yes. Now, anyone who's familiar with Cowboy Bebop will be quite familiar with the wonderful music that is attached to it. Yoko Kano is the lady solely responsible for that music, which means oh. she is involved yeah. for this one, uh, that, which is huge. That pleases me so much. So, that gives me more hope for this series, at least. Now, while they haven't previously announced you know, a second season is planned... They also had not mentioned that Yoko Kano was involved in it at all. And she's currently got her, um, the people who formed the Seatbelts, the band she created for Cowboy Bebop, they've been on doing online collaborations, creating music during lockdown. Oh, that's so cool. So it's just like they're clearly, they clearly are used to working together and they're still in touch. So I wonder if we are going to see new versions of these old school songs brought together for this uh, live action adaptation. It's also that you mentioned they're going to be one hour long episodes yeah. and that there is a possibility of two seasons for this. I want to hold this in the same esteem that I'm holding for June 2020 coming out in the end of the year. It's like, mm. I don't want to get my hopes up, but dear God, that hype is real. Yeah. I, I, I will, uh, I'll pray to Hestia and we'll be good. <laughs> like, the, the, the goddess of the blue string of gravity defyingness. <laughs> um, and of course, Ghost in the Shell, standalone complex 2045, which is what spawned us to do this episode, of mm -hmm. course. Spawned is correct, the correct word, apparently. S spurned. Spurned. Yeah. Spawned. Oh, spawned. no, I hate that. No. I absolutely hate that. That's so bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's been renewed already before it even launched. Uh, second season is in the works. There's a first season with 12 episodes, second season moving forward um when production ig originally talked about it um their president of the usa branch uh, maki terashima furatu stated that the anime would have two 12 episode seasons so this is kind of in line with that or original uh, original announcement from 2017 um but kenji kamiyama who did the standalone complex uh series directed season one and shinji aramaki who did apple seed is directing season two mm. so I, I personally i would have just had them on board together for both because they've both worked together before, i really but... feel like that would have made it uh better yeah it's a more cohesive team yeah um so apparently there are some issues with the series especially the first few episodes um we will obviously do a proper review on that at the point when we've had a chance to sit down and watch all of it yeah mm. um once you know all 24 episodes are out mm. um but the w from everything we've seen and what we've watched those first three episodes and the first episode in particular is really quite poor standard wise compared mm -hmm. to the rest of ghost in the shell but allegedly at about episode six mark it gets r a lot better like mm. back to traditional storytelling now whether that's true or not we we can't say we haven't checked it but that's what a lot of the reviews are saying i kind of worry about series that have that kind of a stipulation on them though when you're told oh this series is really good after you're like five episodes in, yeah. it's like you shouldn't need most, to run most up. Most people do three episode rule. Mm. Like, let's, let's not beat around the bush. Most people will go three episodes. That's an hour of my time if you haven't grabbed me. I mean, it's yeah. kind of a there is kind of a reason why that is a thing in anime culture. Why that was even uh, uh what was that anime that was actually mentioned and explored in? Um, oh, anime guitarist. That's the one. We yeah. we must cover that. We later. must do that. Yeah, because that, that was is wacky. Meta is all buggery. Like just <laughs> wow. Um, well, aside from that, obviously, we do have to go through all of the coronavirus news. So, season two of The Promised Netherland has been pushed back to January 2021. Aww. That's due to the production delays. Um, and the second season of um, the show was planned to air in October with the first season returning to screens in July before it. So, that's been pushed back. So, it's going to essentially shift all both projects three months. So, in October... 
the original show will air again in Japan and then in January season two will air. Um, similarly, upcoming episodes of the Fishing Club anime Diary of Our Days at the Breakwater have been delayed until further notice with the third episode the last to air for now and the season's cash filled detective series The Millionaire Detective Balance Unlimited will not be returning to screens for now with the show's third episode onwards delayed indefinitely whoa yeah which is we're starting to see quite a big hit unfortunately mm. in the way these things have been done which is it, it sucks because the, in, in particular I was excited for both of those I've, I've been really enjoying watching both of them yeah it's um I feel like this sort of thing it was bound to happen it's just it, it just it's a shame that it couldn't have uh, you know been dealt with but um, also, there are films as well, which have been delayed due to the virus. So, uh, words bubble up like Soda Pop, which was originally planned to release this month on May 15, along with the anime series Given's film, uh, which oh. was due out on the 16th, have both been delayed indefinitely. New release dates will be announced at a future date, we've been told, but we don't know exactly when that will be, because it's going to depend when you can go to the cinemas again. Mm. So, no point doing mm. that. Um, and almost unsurprisingly, the last instalment of Studio Kara's re build of Evangelion has been delayed, which was due for release on June 27th. Uh, fortunately, the delay did come with a nice piece of artwork and the fourth film's English title, which is Evangelion 3.0 plus 1.0, Thrice Upon a Time. So mm. Anno having a lot of fun coming up with very strange ones like... 3.0 plus 1.0 is the 4.0. Half-Life 3... Confirmed. 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 Pretty confirmed. Um, and as with all delays at the moment, new release dates for the films will be postponed once the pandemic allows for public gatherings in Japan again. Well, in other news, here's the headlines from the past three weeks because we did lots of extra episodes in the past fortnight. <laughs> Keep Your Hands Off Izuken's anime has won one of March's four Galaxy Awards. The awards honour outstanding programs, individuals and groups with the hope of improving the quality of the Japanese broadcast culture. As the anime has won one of these monthly awards, it's now also a candidate for the yearly Galaxy Award, considered a big achievement in the anime industry. Yeah, yeah. The upcoming season of Cells at Work has been given an official release date for January 2021, with the new season adapting the spin-off manga Cells at Work Black. Now, if you haven't heard of this, this is the upcoming series which was previously described as a second season it's to sell instead adapting the story of a body which is struggling to fight an illness with a new cast of characters the series also has a theatrical release in the works adapting a story from the core series fifth volume and there's a load of anime heading to netflix in the coming months the first two arcs of the one piece anime will land on the service on june 12 with 130 episodes available in the u.s canada australia and new zealand the new pokemon series Pokemon Journeys is also heading to service on the same date with 12 episodes landing each quarter so just in line with what's happening in Japan as far as their broadcast schedule goes and last season's Dora Hetero will also see its international Netflix release on May 28th having previously aired in Japan from January 12th the show is also receiving six bonus mini episodes with its Blu-ray release planned for late June jumping over to the bookshelves the Hinamatsuri manga is coming to an end with its 19th volume this summer and the 18th compiled book was released recently this is the manga that's been running since 2009. We saw an uh, anime adaptation of it last year. And in dub news, Sentai Filmworks' dub of the cute poetry series Senryo Girl has unveiled its full English dub cast with the home media release expected to ship on May 19th. And that's your anime news for the week ending May 3rd, 2020. Kawaii Fi Radio! We'll be there on time. There's 20 minutes of ads. Cinema Club. Yes, Ghost in the Shell. Let's get stuck into the nitty gritty cyberpunk itty bitty because it's good fun. The itty bitty? Itty bitty. Uh, mm. Mi microscopic micro machines and stuff. Mm. Nano machines, son. Nano. Nano. Um, Ghost in the Shell, 1995 was the original film. Um, manga predates it, of course, as well. Uh -huh. But um, this was, uh, I love the um, English translation, if you go a literal translation, because it's um, Kokaku Kidokai, and it literally translates as Mobile Armored Riot Police, and we got Ghost in the Shell. <laughs> I mean, Ghost in the Shell sounds all kind of... Uh, cool and stuff but mobile armored riot police sounds badass i would love to see a show about that and just 
they've got like you know electronic roller skates on and they're just yeah oh, that's the future I want yeah yeah just like mix Ghost in the Shell with I asked air for gear. this yeah. oh, <laughs> that would be great <laughs> like, he did a trick and then he took down the perp it was amazing <laughs> <laughs> so um, Ghost in the Shell this whole story starts with a man called Masamune Shiro who was the writer for the manga um, this is a project that he was really passionate about and apparently Catcher in the Rye paid played quite a large influence in him writing it as well. Mm, really? Um, just exploring like what it means to be human, which mm. is kind of cool. Um, but the film was produced by Production IG. Um, you might recognise the name if you've seen Psycho Pass, Haikyuu, the, uh, I think it's the volleyball anime. Yes. Um, Sengio Basara, Pat Labor, or some of the Pokemon films were done by it as well, but not the, um, the core series either. But um, let, let's talk about what this is. So in the year 2029, Nihama City has become a technologically advanced metropolis. Due to the great improvements in cybernetics, its citizens are able to replace their limbs with robotic parts, and the world is now more interconnected than ever before. The city's public security section 9 is responsible for combating corruption, terrorism, and other dangerous threats following the shift towards globalization. Now, you've got the strong-willed Major Motoko Kusanagi of Section 9, and she spearheads a case involving a hacker known only as the Puppet Master, who leaves Ooh. a trail of victims stripped of their memories with fake memories in place. Like many in this futuristic world, the Puppet Master's body is almost entirely robotic, and it gives them an incredible power. And it all kind of boils down to Motoko and her subordinates following the enigmatic criminal's trail and other parties, including Sector S Section 6, another department mm -hmm. in the police group, starting to get involved and forcing her to confront the extremely complicated nature of the case. It ponders various philosophical questions, such as the meaning of life, what it means to be human, how you know what is a soul... Um, and they soon realise that the one who will provide these answers is none other than the Puppet Master themselves. Mm -hmm. Now, if you haven't seen any Ghost in the Shell, this is... Well, I think you struggled with this one a bit, I Dave. really, really struggled with this one, and I think it's because I've been so spoilt with like nice graphics growing up that <laughs> watching, <laughs> watching a film from... Mm, when I, before I was born, um, <laughs> <laughs> was actually quite difficult, and I felt that in some spots it was very slow paced. Mm. It is very. Uh, I don't want to say like it's wordy because no, that's not the thing. But there are a lot of moments where the pace just kind of drops away, just so that they can have those like big, long, deep, meaningful conversations mm -hmm. on the nature of their reality. Yeah, it, it really likes to kind of explore the world that it's set in, as opposed to just kind of go along with the ride. I mean, it's mm. got a lot to say, and that's kind of... Uh, I don't know if that works in its favour. I mean, in your case, you just sort of like... Uh, uh, what did you? You didn't fall asleep or anything. Did I you? didn't, but I did have to watch it in a couple of sittings. Mm. I, I kept stopping it when I was watching it, but I think that was more the lack of coffee and distractions that mm. day. That would do it. Yeah, you know, it's just like phone kept beeping. It's like, ooh, what's this? What's this I new watched, thing? Someone's tagged me in a meme. I watched this uh, ages ago, right after watching the first three episodes of mm. Ghost and Shell Standalone Complex when they came out on mm. SBS, mm. and uh, that kind of actually. Like, my introduction to this actually uh, introduced me to various philosophies such as the whole idea of transhumanism. Mm. Mm. Like, Which it definitely explores throughout it. Mm. Now, this film, the film adaptation presents the story's themes in a more serious, atmospheric, and slow-paced manner than the manga does. Um, it was a big point of uh, discussion when this film came out at the time, saying that, oh, it's actually a lot slower paced than what we're used to seeing in the manga. Some I mean, of the comedy elements are gone. A manga oh, is nice. definitely more episodic. I mean, yeah. it's a manga, there's episodes, there's chapters, whereas they have to sort of like squish a lot of this into a single movie, and so mm. you don't get a lot of uh, exploration. Well, actually, world in stuff. order to condense the manga into 82 minutes of screen time, the movie excludes the subplots in order to focus exclusively on the Puppet Master story, mm. um, which means that you don't get to learn about some of the characters' backstories, their backgrounds... Yeah, so. it was kind of felt that at some points there were little moments like and little conversations that kind of led off to something and then it was never really discovered and yeah, you really didn't never find explored. out more about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But um Ghost in the Shell was the first anime vid film to reach Billboard number Billboard's number 1 video slot at the time of its release, the first mm. anime of all time. That's so cool. it's it's a pretty big deal and in western cinema it's had plenty of influence as well. Like um the Wachowski brothers who create 
uh, no, the Wachowski sisters now, isn't it? Yes. Um, the Wachowskis, who created The Matrix and its sequels, showed it to producer Joel Silver saying, we want to do that for real when they were talking about making The Matrix. So the Matrix series took several contrasts on the film, including The Matrix's digital rain is allegedly inspired by mm. the um, some of the graphics you see of them jumping into um, people's memories and so on. And that makes sense, there. yeah. Mm, I um, see that. It also, well, inspired by the opening credits of Ghost in the Shell and the way characters access the Matrix through holes in the back of their heads. Ah. So very similar. Other mm. parallels have also been drawn to James Cameron's Avatar, Steven Spielberg's AI, Artificial Intelligence, and Jonathan Mosco's uh, Surrogates. And Cameron cited Ghost in the Shell as a sort of ins- source of inspiration with an influence, with major influence on Avatar. Mm-hmm. So it, it's it's had an effect on the world. Well, there's that constant whole theme of uh, jumping out of your body and shifting your consciousness into something else. Mm. And it's like the the whole question is just sort of like fascinating in that point. If you do take yourself out of your body and put yourself into a machine, are you still a person, a human, yeah. or are you not? That's yeah, the kind that, of the big question. They really love to explore it now, and that's how uh, Motoko's whole um, struggle in the movie, in the series, is just okay. Not exactly human. What am I? Yeah. Where do I stand? Mm. Now, the director of the film, Mamuro Oshii, he did Skycrawlers, all the Pat Labor franchise Oof. and films, which is once again by production IG. Um, Urusai Yatsura, which was um, oh. Um, What's her name? The lady who did Ranma and Inuasha. Yes, yes. Um, it was one of her first shows, and that's got like nine seasons as well. Nice. Um, he ended up becoming the writer for Standalone Complex Season 1 um, and, you know, did a really good job with that. Which so, we'll talk about in a bit. We will. But look, this is um, a film which has kind of got a lot of random influences to it, and I loved watching it, even though I did struggle a bit through it as well. And it, it explores... Uh, I mean, straight away you've got the cyberpunk ideas that straight away bring up, like, you know, what is it to be human? What is it to, you know, have a soul? What is a soul, you know? And then there's the whole thing about uh, the people who don't go cybernetic as well, which is more explored in the series. It's like, mm. are they less, are they to be considered a bit like more humanoid or less human than they are? Mm. Like the, the question of what denotes evolution is it natural evolution anymore or, you know, our own choice of evolution? Um, but I thought this would have aged worse than it has. It does still hold up after 25 years, but if you like D and you, you know, mostly been brought up on shiny, Kyoani, beautiful, <laughs> yeah, wonderfulness. Yeah, it's an unfortunate cast. <laughs> you, you, you might struggle a little bit through it. Um, there is a 4K release mm. out of it now, um, which is meant to be a lot better. And I think in 2015, they kind of redid the show in the modern style as well. I mean, something like this, it's a lot like kind of watching old movies. Like uh, mm. you mentioned uh, Avatar before. Yeah. It's like going from watching that to watching Casablanca, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. It's like Absolutely. that old Definitely. kind of black and white, mm. slower paced kind of a deal. It's it's a different experience. It's not for everyone. Everyone's mm. got their own individual taste. Mm. But even though it is older, there is a really great level of detail and backgrounds, the action oh, scene. Especially for its time. Mm. It was like practically revolutionary. Also, like the movement of the characters mm, feels definitely. really good. It's very, very smooth. And even mm. though it's quite old, it's still like a beautifully drawn yeah. film. And they have weight, which is always a concern with like the older anime because characters mm. might seem like they're lighter than they should be. And these people are cybernetic. Mm. And then they start, you, you realise that, yeah, they're heavier than normal humans. And you can tell by the way they move as well. Because when compared to like a normal person who's in their squad, they're just like, wow, they're so much faster. Mm. <laughs> so much faster. And I love the little details that every time Major jumps on something, the ground underneath her kind of like caves in a little yeah. bit. I thought that was a really cute detail. Also, the f- we like we were discussing this, the three of us, like the way Major's body shape is designed mm. It's realistic to someone with muscles. Mm. Mm-hmm. It's it's not this idea that you know robots can be skinny and just you know that because they're robots they're more powerful. No, they still need to have a mass of electronic muscles or mm. whatever it is compensating for it to actually do it. So mm-hmm. her having like mus- muscular shoulders, for instance, is a lot more realistic than some of the more modern sort of CG um, or cyberpunk style shows that we see. Yeah, it's, she's not like a tiny little waif of a girl. She is jacked. Mm. She, it's like she could absolutely kick anyone's ass oh yeah which absolutely. she does quite often uh, quite a lot um, she lifts now and rips there are some interesting trivia that you guys might like to hear about I'll this so in the opening credits those numbers that the matrix decided was very cool uh, that are flowing in the background are actually computer codes for the different names of all the staff members who worked on the movie Ooh. 
that's so yep. cute. So I love little additions like that. Well, obviously, as I said, they now they inspired the famous Matrix source code. Um, in ordinary anime, characters would at least blink to create the feeling of being animated. But in this movie, Matoko's eyes intentionally never blink. Mm-hmm. Kind of, do- she kind of doesn't have to. It's not like she has to exactly. wet her I mean, cybernetic th- they eyes. They do show her blinking a few times when it's like closing her eyes to prevent dust getting in and stuff like that. But apparently, director Mamoru Oshii's intention was to portray her as almost a doll-like um, person because mm. of obviously mm. being a robot. She does really kind of have the doll-like features. She has the big mm. eyes and kind yeah. of like the big lips and stuff like that. And the that, limited so. sort of emotional range too. Yes. Like even though she does have emotions, it doesn't feel like her body can express them very well. Mm. She's a very stoic mm. uh, expression. Mm-hmm. Oh, also, this will give you a bit of a laugh. So apparently the English dub for this is awful. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, um, here's some fun It's facts. early 90s. It took two days to record the Japanese dub. Two days. Mm. Whereas the English version took three weeks to get right, the direct quote from uh, Oshi is, they can speak the lines, but they couldn't emote. Oh, and he's dear. not wrong. Crikey. He's not wrong. They. I mean, at that really. point, wouldn't you just get your casting agent to go, I think I need to rethink my job. Yeah, mm-hmm. pretty much. I think, I mean, probably half the problem is to do with the person who is directing the voice actors. I mean, we've seen that with modern anime and older anime. Some anime, like some actor, voice actors are amazing in one thing and then they go to another company and they're terrible. I mean, that's that's not just anime, that's movies in general. You guess it, you can like have your award-winning actors on set, but if they are, you know, if they lack direction, yeah. what can they do? Sit there and kind of hum, I guess. That, <laughs> that's about it. Um, and in the movie, the city was created to be a complete mixture of Asian culture. So Chinese is the primary one used. Mm. Um, to go with the art, the music created for the movie used whole assortments of Southeast Asian origins and even playing methods that were often ad lib to create mixed uh, eth- ethnicity. The hilarious thing is the guy who composed the music couldn't play half of these instruments. Oh my goodness. So that's and it actually made it sound more genuine because mm. of that, which was you know, it's fantastic. So look it's... That opening theme to the main movie is oh, just it's beautiful. Oh, and haunting. the, and the credits as well. Mm. Like, wow. But look, this is a film that if you haven't seen it, it's worth checking out just to kind of know where it all started. Um, the series is great but it's also like 50 episodes or so. So then you've got like uh, all the extra spin off films. So you've got uh, Ghost in the Shell 2 Innocence. Mm-hmm. That one's a crazy one. Ghost in the Shell 2.0, which is a CG remake of the first film. Mm. Mm. Allegedly, it's meant to be a direct remake, but it's not quite a direct remake in it's, CG. It's, it's a tad off. It's early 2000 CG. You know, <laughs> it where it looks like a PlayStation 2 game. Yeah, I exactly. think we saw about maybe less than 10 seconds of it trying to find the original yeah, film. We were like, that's not the right uh, one. Yeah, like, right. Turn off, turn wrong one. yeah, we were going through different DVD cases going, is this the one? It, look, nope, it looks nope, like it. Nope, no, I'm like, no, abort. Yeah. Um, and then there was recently this uh, Ghost in the Shell Arise series, which all continue a story as well. Um, and then there's some other ones. There's, and there's our video Solid games. State Society, which is a direct sequel to the two uh, standalone complex series. Yep. And, uh, yeah, they require prior viewing. Yep, which is fair. And then, obviously, there's the live action, and now there's the new series, and there's another project in the works as well. So there's a lot of Ghost in the Shell, but fortunately, it's all kind of interlinked. And the good thing is you can watch most of the franchise on Amazon, so you don't have to go out and buy DVDs or anything. Um, The film, the 95 film, for some reason, isn't currently available in Australia. I'm not Mm. sure if that's a limitation because of my Amazon account or what, Um, but, you know, we had it on DVD anyway. It's not on Netflix either. No, it's not. Um, but I'm sure that'll be resolved because it's listed there as something that you can access. So mm. it must be there in some shape or form. Um, but yeah, we should probably jump on and talk about the series, actually, because that's uh, a whole other kettle of fish or, I don't know, mecha fish? Mecha fish. Frankenfish? Mecha fish. Mecha piranhas. Wi Fi Radio. I think I watched that as a kid. Oh yeah, I remember that. Back catalog. Do 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 do. I recently heard that music on a different video entirely somewhere on YouTube. Oh, yeah. That'd be about right. It's from the YouTube sound library, so... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you cheated, if didn't it's, you? If it's there, use it. <laughs> Alrighty. Uh, Ghost in the Shell Stand Alone Complex. Now, this was 2002? Mm-hmm. Mm. This was uh, This was early 2000s. This was like a big... 
like this was a big proper introduction to anime for me as well. This was another one of those like thank mm. you Netflix mo I'm sorry, thank you SBS moments. Yes, mm. SBS, the wonderful place where we watch cult films before soccer. Mm. SBS was the original anime streaming. Services. Yeah. Well, streaming, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Scheduled streaming service. Yes. <laughs> Back in my day, we didn't have streaming services. We made appointments. We recorded things on our VHS players. On Check our VCRs. Mm. Oh, I, I actually used to, I um did Shows back in the age. day um set the timer so um neon genesis was on every monday night mm. and i had my um, martial arts training on monday night whoa 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 you knew how to set a timer on a vcr yeah sorcery <laughs> i thought you were going to be shocked that he knew martial arts oh no 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 yeah. no, no no i've That's got so i've got the belts in the other room oh there you go just show them off you know when i want to date it's like hello look at this look at what i did when i was a kid oh. yeah look what i did i got a black belt when i was 16 like yeah nice I, always I'm, be able to protect your dates that way yeah I, I can protect you yeah but you haven't run in like several months yeah i know yeah. <laughs> means i can't run away it's fight or flight no it's just fight or fight it's no choice fighting. moving along to something fighty, Ghost in the Shell standalone complex. This is not very much the same as Ghost mm. in the Shell original movie. It's it is catered very much towards a different kind of an audience. It is. Mm. It's also meant to be set after. Well, it is set the year after the film. Oh, yeah, yeah. And is meant to be a sequel, but not a sequel. Yeah, it's. Uh, it does not really address what, what happened, happened back there. Yeah. It now addresses the fact that Section Nine is now pretty much autonomous and not yeah. like run by a corrupt organization or anything like that uh the team is pretty much now um well, it's the same people that we saw in the film but with they've a few added extras. like four extra people total i think not that uh they get a whole lot of screen time but yeah they uh represent sort of different group functions and mm. now they feel like a more cohesive kind of a group they are still in the business of solving like cyber warfare crimes mm. terrorism and all that kind of stuff but um good stuff all the good stuff. You like the crime. Mm, I do like the crime. But yeah, and that's where this very much differs. There is the whole philosophical question of life, the universe and everything is still present, mm. but there is a bit more focus on their on like the cases they solve and the crimes that are going on and them being super cops. Which yeah. is it's a bit more action movie to And um, the Tachikomas. Oh, uh, I love them. They they weren't in the mm. film. Yes. The film. They're very precious. Uh, so, yeah, yeah um, as well as just having, you know, a new building, new armaments, new squad, all that kind of stuff, they get a set of new allies in the form of the touchy comas. They are... <laughs> D's just going, squee! <laughs> okay, so imagine R2-D2 with um, a set of four robot legs, a pod in the back that someone can ride in, Gatling guns on their hands, and just... A high-pitched voice. High-pitched, adorable, childlike voices and personalities. If any robot was ever going to say ooh woo, it would be those. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely those. Ooh woo, the robots. And um, uh, they are they are precious. They are like the most destructive things you have ever met. They swing I between know. buildings on like <gasps> spider wire. They turn invisible. They are like they get damaged so much. Oh, they mm. <laughs> they take so much of a beating. In the second episode, like one of them is absolutely drilled by tank fire and he's just like, I'm okay. I can't move, but I'm okay. <laughs> There's a great one later on where like um, the major decides, because the tachycomas can go invisible too. <laughs> um, they decide to scare a guy who's been harvesting organs. So oh. they chase him down a narrow alleyway of sheds. It's not wide enough for the tachycoma, so but it's, it's just like it's crushing cloaked, the walls. So there's just the crushing walls coming towards him. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think at that point you would drop the uh, organs you were carrying and... Um, Probably everything else inside you as well. Yeah. Everything else inside you as well. I think well I decided I need a new career by that point. Yeah, it's like, this is not good. I'm giving no. this all up to become a stand-up comic. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, like the big difference from the film I found is that Motoko has emotions, and if, if it is meant to be a direct sequel, it is at least a new body. She, uh... uh yeah, it's, oh, it's yes, got to be. So. Um, she is a bit more emotive, a bit more warmer to all her squad mates as well. Her and Bato's relationship just continues to be like mm. the ultimate bromance. I love the so fact good. that Bato, he's so, if you've uh, seen the live action film or the um, the original film, he's the guy who's got the artificial eyes mm. and he's the big bulky dude. Yeah, he's He great. is now the comedy guy. Oh, he's like... <laughs> he's always been very funny, I find. He's an yeah. uh, ex-military kind of a bloke and he's just... He enjoys his job. He likes mm. what he does. He loves getting into the combat and, like, you know, 
getting, getting all punchy and shooting and stuff like yeah. that. But he's like not a complete psychopath about mm. it. So he's also I just very am, caring. I was going to say, I just imagine his dating profile likes to get all punchy and shooty. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I like watching movies, smoking cigars, and a nice bar brawl. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and occasionally giving my touchy coma all natural oil, which made it trip out. <laughs> so. <laughs> I like feeding my dogs as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's mm. oh, yes. The theme of the dogs is all oh. throughout like the series. As it well, really which is. It's beautiful. <laughs> Now, um, it does kind of really expand on like the whole cyberpunk world as well. Like, yes. We get a g- bit of a glimpse of it in the film. In the world, then, it's... D- oh, hi, D, you're just going to eat the microphone <laughs> now. Really like, G- G hungry? <laughs> I can get you some food. Oh, like. <laughs> um, yeah, that's the thing. The world building in the original movie, it's there. It's sort of present. You get the whole idea that it's that sort of lived-in future, sort mm. of like um, Blade Runner. Yeah, that kind yes, of like it's much. futuristic, but it's old futuristic. It's been, it's had its time, and now it's all grimy and stuff like that. Mm. Everything era. feels a lot cleaner in Ghost in the Shell standalone complex. Yeah, though a lot of the environments would not feel out of place in your sort of like modern day sort of like. Uh, slice of life. Yeah, and like I mean, you're used to seeing like um, those sort of environments. Then occasionally they'll drop into an area which looks almost sort of like a slum or a black market, and it's full of like cyber brains and like robot pieces and stuff like mm. that. It's and uh, yeah, so there is a lot more sort of world building. You get a better idea of what just what people are capable of with this mm. sort of like new kind of technology. Mm. You get to see a lot of things like happen and rehappen, like um people's eyes being hacked so that they see things that are just yeah. not there. Uh, limbs sort of like, um, uh, what would you say? Rotating? F- or? Fragmenting into pieces and opening up to reveal a hidden gun and oh, stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. It's like a lot of these sort of like cool little tricks which come back in now and then. So you're just like, hey. And now I'm just that. psyched for Cyberpunk 2077. It's oh, just like, God, just give yes. it to me already. I want to do this to my body. Not 20, my actual body. But 2020 has <laughs> been a crazy year, but at least we'll get that. Well... We Hopefully. say that. We hope. All You've cybernetic fingers crosses. <laughs> uh, look, I, I actually found the dub wasn't that bad either. Of the uh, the cast for this is kind of amazing. Yeah. Uh, Crispin Fry, I think, is in it. He's Ooh. kind of a veteran uh, actor. Uh, people in the modern day might know him from Overwatch. Ooh. He is Winston, the uh, ape. Oh. He's been in a bunch of other animes, oh, but... Boy. um. I gotta say, uh, Motoko's main voice actress. Mm. She's like she's got this like strong, tough, intimidating, but still feminine voice. Uh, we are that is Mary Elizabeth McGlynn. Mm. Uh, I you, was gonna say she sounds familiar. Yeah, you you might know her name, and you definitely know her voice. I uh, tried to actually pick out some just specifics of what she's from. Mm. She's from everything, <laughs> and if she's and. If there is an anime, uh, like a dub that she is not in, she's the voice director. It, she's the voice director for all the ones that she wow. isn't voicing. Incredible. Uh, she, let's see. Uh, every Star Wars animated series from the recent uh, series. Mm. Uh, Naruto, Dragon Ball, <gasps> Final Fantasy, World of Warcraft. Mm. What? Just, yeah, games, movies, animated stuff. She's in it. And it's just like, wow. Okay. Uh, incredible her her resume is intimidating. Just imagine, like, you know, you're a fresh uh, voice actor and you come into, like, a voicing session and then you just see her and you just go, nope, I'm out. <laughs> it's just done. like, oh, okay, I have to be, I have to do my thing next to her. Yikes. Mm, yeah, scary. no, no. Um, what I do question, however, I mean, the, the fighting is really well done. The choreography is really beautifully done as well. The actions have weight to them once again. But I do question why they dress the major in that weird leotard that clearly doesn't fit. I mean, that's <laughs> that's cyberpunk, though. Every cyberpunk female character has that kind of a short bob haircut, mm, a leather true. jacket, and um, very unfitting clothes underneath. Like, it's definitely the whole sort of 80s yeah. showing yeah. up, isn't it? Like, the whole idea that they could, like, leather jacket with a leotard, and it's like, that's clothes! It's like, is it though? I mean, it's a look. In it's the future! It's a look. In the future, we will wear less. <laughs> but I mean, that's that also is part of the major. Her whole, um, her whole thing is that she is mysterious in whatever she does mm. in her spare time, and like, you can't even gauge. It's like, okay, are you into men? Are you into women? Are you like supposed to be uh, secluded and standoffish, or are you really flamboyant and want to show off? It's well, Bato actually made a joke at some point as well, saying to her, "Oh, yeah." 
you know, come on, let's have a fight. Let's have a brawl at the end of an episode when the Tachi Koma goes just a AWOL. Not not in a bad way. It just decides to go off and explore the city on its own. Yeah, it uh, has a, like, there are a bunch of episodes where, you know, you have, like, a crime to be solved. Something bad has happened. Like, mm. it's like someone has been killed in a horrible way. And then you just have sort of, like, random expository episodes like that one mm. where a Tachi Koma just sort of leaves the base, goes for a little wander around the city, finds a little lost girl, becomes her pet dog <laughs> yeah it's Aww. very very and very um cute. like there's a lot of sort of exposition based episodes interweaved mm. with like the main meta plot where they're ha- like hunting down a super hacker and just the sort of like the general episodes where they're just doing weird stuff but yeah back to what you were saying there's sort of like a moment between Motoko oh, yeah. and Bato where they're so just sort of- uh Bato is like going you know she's going why do you keep buying you know um like uh, gym equipment, like muscle strengthening mm-hmm. stuff and all that. It's like, you're a robot. You can't really strengthen it too much. And he's like, no, I can. It's amazing. And, you know, she's like, yeah, nah, nah. And he's like, you know, maybe you should get a male body and then you can use all that power. And she just uses her hacking abilities to make him fall over and oh. just... Yeah, she makes I him punch her. himself in the face. Yes. Just like, I love her. Yeah, she's, she's amazing. So she good. just walks off and goes, I don't need to. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, soundtrack was really good. Mm. Uh, yeah, it's... I uh, I bought the CD when I was yeah. younger as well. Oh, fair enough. It was like, uh, I think it was like the second or third I CD I ever bought. I do have to say that the opening is not particularly memorable and there's that awkward early 2000s CG with that, oh. that cheesy grin it's moment so at the end of it. We we mentioned that uh, the uh, that other animated one looked like PS2 graphics. Same. Yeah, this is, yeah. This is the same. This is PS2 FMVs. <laughs> this is wow. It's the portable version. It is. <laughs> um, the outro song is called Lithium Flower, however, and there is a hilarious line in it. She's incredible math. She's incredible math. What oh, no. the lyrics the heck to these does that songs? Mean? I have to wonder if they are taken like directly from a Japanese translation. Well, I or know that this one, this is the original song. So this is what was used in the Japanese version, and it was requested to be made for them. Wow. So the team clearly had an input in this, and the singer was just like. That's what you want. That's what you're getting. All right. She's in, she's a go. nine. She's incredible math. Just incredible math. Incredible. <laughs> like, Run that by me again. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a good tune. You're yeah. sitting bopping around, then it goes like incredible math. <laughs> How is she when she doesn't surf? The lyrics. <laughs> oh yeah, it's it's pretty bad. Um, but I mean that makes sense when she's not surfing the net. Yes. Or I'd like to meet her when she wakes up and it's like actually, as in like her consciousness wakes up. There is up. actually another sort of a great uh bit in uh one of the ooh, tougher episodes. Mm. Like the main plot is they are following a super hacker called the Laughing Man. Mm. He has better <laughs> hacking abilities than the major. Like she hacked a guy to make him punch himself in the face. This guy hacked entire corporations worth yeah. of people and did like crazy Aww. stuff. Mm. And now he's resurfaced. He's done a thing in public and now everyone's talking about it. He's back. So a bunch of them enter the enter their consciousnesses into the internet, into a chat room to talk about it for a whole episode. And the I major is there in disguise. And uh, at the end of it, it's revealed that she's been in that sort of virtual chat room talking to all these people while she's been driving. Yep. And it's just <laughs> I'm sorry. What? Because yep. Bato looks over and goes, what? Have you been <laughs> doing that the whole time? <laughs> it's fine. I know this area like the back of my hand. I could drive it with my eyes She's closed. on a freeway. <laughs> <laughs> this is like, whoa. But look, I mean, the series is great. It is also on Amazon. Um, we can highly recommend you check it out. Um, I think it ends up being close to 50 episodes. I think it's 24 episodes a season almost. The second series is a okay. Little... I didn't really much get into it, but it also did give a bit more characterization to some of the background characters. Mm. Like, um, they've added people to their team, like Saito the Sniper. Mm. Uh, mm. Don't run from him. You'll just die tired. Yep. Uh, Pazu, who is very strongly... Um, Hinted to be ex Yakuza. Boma does explosives. Leonardo leads, Donatello does machines. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, you get these people in the background and they serve their group function, but they are simply present. They don't yeah. really. You don't really get much of their character. No, you don't. You're just kind of like, oh, they're the people they leave when they've got to run off to someone else. It's settled a bit in like the second series. Like there's a poker game where Saito reveals his backstories and where he mm. met the major. He was on the other side in the war and he fought her. Wow. And she's, he survived. She's the reason why he has the uh, cybernetic eye patch. Yeah. 
Uh, Unsurprising. Yeah, but it sounds about right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, look, check it, check the series out. It's actually pretty good, both in dub and sub. Um, it does have those Which differences from you know the the film, of course, as most you know adaptations do. Yeah. Um, but you can watch it on Amazon. So let's talk about live action. Wi-Fi Radio. We don't talk about Dragon Ball Evolution. Or Last Airbender. Death Note. Oh. Live action. Just a little awkward, that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Ghost in the Shell, live action. 2017. 2017. Scarjo. I can't believe that it came out in 2017. I know. I thought it was a lot more recently than that. And I, I feel went, old. <laughs> yeah, where did those three years of my life go? I don't Just understand. Gone. They're gone. In anime. So it was yeah. time well spent. It's fine. It's true. <laughs> Anime or cosplay was one of the two. Um, Ghost in the Shell came out in 2017 and was directed by Rupert Sanders and written by Jamie Moss, William Wheeler and Aaron Kruger. It's mm, a pretty big crew. Mm. Starring in it are the likes of Scarlett Johansson, uh, Takeshi Kitano, which we had a very good discussion <laughs> about Oh, earlier. Takeshi Kitano. Yes, um, Takeshi Kitano. People might not recognize him, but if you're into sort of like weird Japanese culture. This guy has done some crazy stuff. Mm. He's been a director, a writer, a producer, an actor, a painter, a beekeeper. He's incredible. Someone gave him a bee, he kept it. <laughs> oh, God. And, I would um, do that too. Like, one of the things that he's most sort of notable for in the subculture is that he made a show called Takeshi's Castle. Yes. So good. It is a Japanese game show that was very widely dubbed and remixed mm. for Western audiences in the late 90s. It is the antithesis of occupational health and safety. Absolutely. It's wonderful. Yeah. And so to see him in this as like Aramaki, the sort of the head of operations, the pivotal like wise bloke, their master Yoda with a revolver is just... <laughs> It's it's so weird because we're used to seeing him go, please try and run through these seven walls full of doors where only two of them are real. Mm. Or like jump that. over this pit of muddy water and land mm. on this tiny target. Or try and stick yourself to this wall. <laughs> <laughs> like it's, it's a great show. Okay, it's ridiculous. What we're saying sounds confusing, but trust me, YouTube MXC or Takeshi's Castle it's we'll, wonderful. We will whack this on our YouTube page. Mm, it's uh, on basically our Facebook. basically just like 80s Wipeout. It is. Um, anyway, it also has Michael Pitt, um, mm-hmm. Pillow Espac, Chin Han, and Juliet Binoche. Now, that sounds like a pretty diverse cast, it if you ask me. It is a very, very diverse cast. Which um, is uh, kind of surprising, considering how much flack this movie cop. It did cop a lot of flack when it first came out, which was kind of disappointing that it then overshadowed a lot of the diverse cast that's actually in it. Yeah, because mm-hmm. th- didn't everyone essentially say it was being whitewashed as the major was played by Scarlett Johansson. Mm, and if you yeah. know anything about the series or the films or the franchise as a whole, you'll know why that's a bit ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's kind of not... I can see where a lot of people came from, definitely, mm. but also then watching the series and understanding the series going, oh, it's a major plot point. Oh, that's yeah. why no one wanted to spoil it. And oh, I understand. It's kind of spelled out to people like it's not even spoilerific in the first part because... They keep calling her Mira mm. mm-hmm. and uh, giving her this sort of a backstory where you're just like, wait, that's a step off. Yeah, mm, That's not and right. And then it's sort of explained through the whole thing. There's a whole... It's the point of the story. <laughs> so it's like we can't actually tell you the explanation for it because it kind of ruins it. Go and see it. It's good. A huge awesome. theme of the franchise is identity. And that mm. is what is explored in the film. Mm. Yes, definitely. Mm. Um, it is said to be set in the near future when the line between humans and robots is blurring. The plot follows the Major, Johansson, a cyborg super soldier who investigates her past. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. It's very interesting that it says um, it just investigates her past because it's kind of a main plot point throughout the film, but not in the 1995 film. Yeah. yeah. So yeah there it's are, interesting that they chose that one. There are always going to be differences mm, in adaptation. There are th- The uh, differences have to have a reason, though. That is why I think, arguably, this film succeeded where, uh, say, M. Night Shyamalan's Last mm. Airbender failed. Well, that's Let's because he didn't that. even know what he was doing, yeah. let's be fair. Um, we'll rip on I did later. miss this in cinemas, and Same. this was the first time I watched it, and I really wish I had have seen it in mm. cinemas, because, wow, that would have been good. It was beautiful, mm. honestly. It was really, really beautiful. And this also should have done a lot better than it did, because it mm. is actually a great film. Mm. Like it, You don't have to have seen other Ghosts in the Shells to appreciate it. It's self-contained. It's what you'd call sort of like a standalone story. Ooh. Standalone complex? <laughs> <laughs> There's a whole reasoning behind that term, but we won't get into it. Um, the live-action Ghost in the Shell is, of course, based on the manga of the same title. 
Um, fans of the original film also find that in the 2017 film, there are quite a few key moments that have been recreated in the live action. Mm, beautifully so beautifully. as well. Beautifully. Very well Like done. the uh, that fight in the canals between that yeah. guy with the stealth the suit and... The truck guy? Yes. yes. That was I so well that. done. Practically a shot that. for shot. And oh. so well done. Having watched the live action and then going and watching the 95 film afterwards, I was like, oh, I remember this bit. Yeah, and I, I know, remember right? this bit. And it's basically shot for shot. It's mm. You see the airplane over the top of it, like mm. all of the water and everything. Oh, it gave me The surrounding buildings. It. Yes. Oh. It's and beautiful. for a filmmaker, that has got to be something amazing to do. Oh. Yeah. Like, to recreate. Something like, that was animated. Beautiful shots. Mm. Also, can I just point out as well, like, I was really impressed by the fact that they used the same design for the tank from the end of the animated film for the live mm, action. Yeah. I mean, it's not the same story um, as we've discussed, yes. but they, it still plays a part and it's it's bang on point and it's the same shot for shot fight almost. Mm. It's just it's in a different location. It's just slightly different. There are some like story points, points yeah. that are slightly different as well. The themes are explored a lot better than mm. you would have in just that original film. As you said, they don't talk about like the major's past or the the story that connects to it. And mm. the actual film uses aspects from the manga and the series and the original 95 film without using the original story. It kind mm. of borrows from a lot of places and then makes something kind of original and so- sort of poignant to the adaptation for it. Yeah, mm. it's very true to the source material in a... Sp- well, from a certain uh, point of view, from from a spiritual, you know, pre, uh, spiritual successor point of view, not not as in like you know, it's true to keeping you know shot for shot or statement for statement. Yeah, it's I. Uh, there are a lot of purists out there who will basically say uh, that it's not exactly like the original, and so that is a flaw. That is a that but is a black if that's what you want, same. you can go watch the original, yeah. isn't it? You like why would you want to watch an animated film and then go see the exact same thing in live action? You want something slightly different. People are odd. People have their unusual fancies. I think if people want that, that's that's their business and that's their prerogative, I guess. Well, they can pay to make it. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Fan film it. Do it. I mean, you, you'll need a lot of drone cameras, but... So many drone cameras. So many drones. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I'd crowdfund something like that. Mm. Yeah, it could be yeah. fun. A- anyone want to direct? <laughs> I, I don't... I know a guy. His, his, his name is uh, M. Knight. Don't dare finish that <laughs> sentence. Not. You'll be banished to the Shadow Realm. <laughs> um, they did take a lot of aspects from the original film and kind of reshuffled them a little bit. Um, it's always quite tricky bringing Japanese media into a Western audience mm. and making it so that a Western audience can actually follow it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we've, uh, uh, we've seen We really of like that. action <laughs> at every twist and turn, which isn't necessarily a mm. bad thing. It just means that our attention has to be constantly grabbed. And so they took a lot of the different key points from the 95 film and kind of twisted it around, reshuffled them a little bit to make it easier to follow. Mm. And honestly, I found it all vastly easier to follow. It is than the 95 I mean, film when I had no previous That's got to be kind of tricky, though. You watched the live-action adaptation before you watched the original. Mm, yeah. That's mm. That's got to be a bit of a mind trip. Oh, it definitely was. Yeah. Like back, I was like, I don't know what's going on anymore. <laughs> See, I remember seeing most of the 95 film about a decade ago. Mm. Um, so when I was watching the live-action, I'm like, I'm sure I've seen this scene before. <laughs> <laughs> mm, I remember this from somewhere. Yeah, I, I hired it from a video shop. <laughs> was it a blockbuster? Uh, no, Civic Video. Civic. Ooh. Ooh, I actually, actually, no, I believe it was River Video at the time, an independent company. Ooh, independent video That's stores. Even rarer. Wow. No, I, I still have good memories of Civic Video. It's where I rented a lot of Mega Drive games. Mm. Nintendo 64 games here. Ah, uh, yep, yep. Because I'm old. I basically owned Banjo Kazooie from a Civic Video. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I bought it, every, I rented it every week. And it's mm. like, do you guys not want to just buy this? No. No. This is easier. This, this is, is cheaper. Easier. <laughs> easier. When the film was set to be released, it copped a lot of backlash for whitewashing when they cast ScarJo as a role for Major. This took over a lot of media mm. and meant mm. that the actual diversity in the cast was vastly ignored. Yeah, because, I mean, there's there's... A lot of people represented in There's this film. So many, and it's like watching the live action film. I was like, there are so many characters in this I didn't even know existed. Mm. There are so many different people in this from different backgrounds, different places. And I was like, why did I not hear about this? Before? The fact that uh, Aramaki uh, only speaks Japanese and has like Japanese yeah. subtitles mm. that actually kind of brought up a kind of a point for me because throughout the original, the series, and this. They have a sort of an internal mind link communicator where they speak to each other without vocalizing their mm. words. They transmit mm. thoughts to one another. 
So I just have to wonder, are they seeing the subtitles? <laughs> <laughs> on the overlaid on their eyes. Yeah, it's just like, Maybe. they pop up under there. It's just like, uh, how are you doing that, sir? I'm not using technology. I need those in real life, honestly. I know. I struggle so much when people talk to me. I'm like, please give me real life subtitles. <laughs> that would really be a helpful Go- app. Google Sorry. Glass with like an inbuilt microphone, which yes. then automatically translates it and puts it in front of you. That'd be amazing. That, well, that kind of raises a question. I, I review, if you could... Would you replace any of your squishy biological parts for mechanical ones? Absolutely, my eyes. Eyes. Can you see right now my glasses I'm wearing? Absolutely, yep. my eyes are terrible. Yep. I mean, you've got the whole round Harry Potter thing going. I can't, it's true. I can't I'm, I'm a true anime girl. True anime, <laughs> true anime girl. So eyes, uh, Kyle? Ooh. Eyes and my knees. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Knees or ankles? <laughs> knees or ankles. Actually, ankles, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I got to say... Just, pr- it's the joints more than anything else. I'd probably go full cyber. You would, That's honestly. Fair. That's would. unsurprising. The flesh is weak. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I've broken bones. I've lost toenails. We've told you I've the cyber been... revolution oh. is until three days from now. Oh. Calm down. Just gotta wait. <laughs> you forgot Just to send wait. me an invite. Sorry, I'll send it to you now. <laughs> like, I'd send you an invite to my cyber party. Behold the singularity. <laughs> oh, God. Um, but yeah, look, I mean, like, I really enjoyed the film. Mm, like, I really enjoyed it. I, I'm really sad I didn't go see it in cinemas, and I, I feel like it's been greatly underrated by people. I mean, if you have a look on Rotten Tomatoes, it's actually pretty well rated. I feel like this is a case of sort of anti-hype syndrome. Mm. You know how people will like tell you about a movie and say, oh, this thing is amazing. You're going to love it. It has everything. It's got robot chickens and fireworks and lawyers and nuns. <laughs> it's, like, it's got all the things that are amazing. And then you go and see it and you're just like, yeah, oh, it's it got everything you said it has. It, it wasn't that bad, but it. I think you've overhyped it. I think this had kind of the opposite effect. Everyone was saying, mm. oh, this is terrible. It's it really whitewashed bad, yeah. a thing and it's not like the manga or the anime. It's bad, I say. It's bad. And you go see it and go, oh, that was actually pretty good. Mm. I was wrong, actually. It's on a 44% for, on oh. Rotten Tomatoes oh, for the critics. Really? And audience score is only 51%. That's 40,000 viewers. But, I mean, oh. let, let, let's be honest. It's... That most critics don't appreciate anime adaptations because mm. they're looking for more of the same. Yeah. So they're either looking for something for Oscar, you know, that would be Oscar worthy, or something that is truly sort of um, an independent film. Mm. What I really liked about the live action was that they took a lot of key aesthetic aspects from the anime and mm. from the um, manga itself. Mm-hmm. Like, every, nothing's very smooth. All of the cars look like the cars from Back to the Future. Yeah. It's all like. The futuristic movies that we watch now, everything's smooth and sleek. Yeah, the, the, it's kind the of future rough. is shiny now, but yeah. back then it was a lot more sort of punk rock. Yeah, yeah, and it's like as we mentioned that sort of like lived in future where mm, the future has happened and now it's kind of old. Yeah, mm. and a lot of like the outfits that they all wear are quite eighties themed. Mm. Major has a lot of the outfits that you see in the um, ninety five film that she actually wears in mm. the live action, which is really nice. It's kind of the, her jacket. I don't think she wore the leotard, and I'm kind of glad for that mm. like yeah, well, she had like a body suit she had, she had a body suit she had, she had a body suit, suit and it was beautiful it was mm. a good time mm-hmm. the coat that you see in the opening film mm. where she's like i don't need this anymore and throws it off and jumps off a building i was like oh boy does hello she, does she buy a new coat every time she does that Maybe. or does she like climb back up the building yeah, and it's grab GPS it? <laughs> well actually the, ta- <laughs> GPS <tracked her. laughs> the tachi comas were actually in it you just couldn't see them because they were all stealth they went and got the coat <laughs> oh, you know what i feel like that is a it, that's a damn shame that it failed that bad because Imagine if they did do a sequel and they got oh. Tachi Comas. It would have been so good. And but they kind the, of made it like it could have a second film as it well. Def- mm. It definitely was open to that as well. Like, I mean, the go- original Ghost in the Shell film, the way it kind of ends leaves it very open. Mm. But it doesn't feel like it would go in the direction Standalone Complex went in or the direction this film went in. Mm-hmm. I was um, very confused after yeah. the end. It was very like, confused. so are you, are you the same person? Yeah, no. what's going on? Cool. Yes, but no. Yes, but yeah. no. Um, yeah, Maybe. the whole idea of melding identities to create a new identity. It was very mm. trippy. Very trippy idea. It happens in the last like five minutes as well. And you're like, yeah. you, what? You can't do that. This me. is a data dump. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> but um, look, th- this is a great film. Like, mm. don't don't believe the ratings online. Like, we've seen this before See it for a before lot. you judge it. Absolutely, people. yes. I mean, like, un- unlike the live-action um, Fist of the North Star, the North American one, which is absolutely appalling but still good fun. Oh, no, yeah. See that to just to believe that it happened. Yeah, it's My so God. bad. <laughs> I-, I think we're going to need to show we're you gonna... that later, D. Mm, <laughs> that that might be an enforced pieces, viewing <laughs> session. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that might be the only way you get me to view it, to be honest. Yeah, actually. Um, but look, we have run out of time, so let's kick on out. 
Wi-Fi Radio. Well, that is where we're going to leave things for this episode. Thank you so much for joining us. And next episode, we're going time travelling. Oh, no. I hate time travel. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, dear. From the melancholy of Haruhi Suzumeha. Oh, you got it. To the girl who leapt through time. Time travel shows up in some really strange places in anime. It really does. We'll be looking at the shows which make great use of the storytelling element and where you can check them out. And uh, if you've enjoyed listening, hit those likes and subscribe buttons so we can send our latest episodes straight to your device. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You and get uh, notifications and everything. It's really pretty. Them. And please check out our Instagram and Facebook page for more breaking news and uh, some videos. Oh, and just quickly before I do forget, um, there mm-hmm. is a bit of news that we do need to mention which uh, completely slipped my mind. Oh, oh. The team behind uh, Angel Beats and Charlotte at PA Works yeah. have a major announcement coming in the next two weeks. We've put it on our Facebook and Instagram so you can follow. Do we know anything about this? I suspect it'll make you cry. Oh. So. <laughs> I'm so ready to cry. Yeah. Angel Beats it. again. But we will definitely keep you up to date on once we hear out what that is. So do jump on those uh, social information spots for us and we'll uh, get it to you as soon as we know. You've been listening to Kawaii Fire Radio. Thanks for joining us. And until next time, watch some anime. anime.